How is it going guys? Up until now, we've only done some minor stuff to the GR86, mostly aesthetic modifications. But today, that is gonna change. We're gonna be installing the Jackson Racing dual radiator slash oil cooler setup. As the name suggests, it's a radiator with a built-in oil cooler. And some of you guys may ask, why do we need an oil cooler? And that's a great question. Uh, these cars, similar to the previous gen, suffer from high oil temps when doing any sort of performance driving. So when you get those spikes in temperature at a certain point, the oil starts to break down and you're not getting the right amount of lubrication in critical areas, which can cause bad things to happen to your engine. The oil cooler is gonna lower those temperatures, making sure they stay in the optimum range for maximum performance so you don't blow your engine up. So what's so special about the Jackson Racing Setup? Well, to give you guys an idea, they partnered up with CSF Radiators on this project and worked on it for well over a year to develop a true drop-in all aluminum radiator with the oil cooler built in. This is a 31 millimeter CSF core that doubles the cooling surface area compared to the OEM radiator. They ran this on their SCCA Touring 4 FRS that won back-to-back -back national championships. So if this is good enough for their race car, it's definitely gonna be okay on my car. Another thing to note is because the oil cooler is built in uh, versus most other oil cooler setups being a completely separate unit, if I were to need to uh, stuff an intercooler behind my bumper for whatever reason in the future, I don't have to worry about compatibility issues or relocating the oil cooler. We also have the oil cooler adapter. This is gonna sit on top of where the oil filter originally mounts to, and this is where all the lines route into the engine. You also have the option of running some sensor plug ports that allow you to monitor uh, oil pressures or temperatures if you choose. And of course, you get all the different lines, fittings, and hardware necessary for the installation as well. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to get this thing installed. Underneath the car, we need to remove this lower radiator panel that consists of two different pieces. We've got the kind of splash shield on the bottom here that's just held in with some 10 millimeter bolts and pop clips. We're left with three more 10 millimeter bolts that we just need to loosen and then we can push this portion back and it should drop down. We're left with three more 10 millimeter bolts to get this portion off. Before we drain the radiator, I'm gonna take the cap off. Make sure that your car is completely cooled down before you do this, otherwise you're in for a very rude awakening. I'm also going to pull the tube out of the overflow tank, and we're gonna use this uh, to drain the radiator without making a huge mess. On the bottom passenger side of the radiator, you're gonna see the yellow petcock here. This is where we can slide the hose we removed onto. I'm gonna put some paper towels down here just in case. And I have a container underneath the hose and we're going to loosen this until we start to see the coolant flow out. Once it's done draining, we can close this up, pull the hose off and return it to the tank and make sure to clean up any spillage. The intake needs to come off next, so unplug the mass sensor and unclip it from the intake. And we'll just leave it back here. Take a pair of pliers to move this clamp back and we'll pull it off. We can loosen the worm gear clamp with an eight millimeter nut driver. There's gonna be three 10 millimeter bolts holding the intake in place. One of them is down here. With the bolts removed, we can pull this hose off the throttle body and get the intake out of the way. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts holding the radiator neck in place. The top radiator hoses are coming off next. So we're gonna move this clamp. And this is likely gonna be on there pretty good. So highly recommend using a pair of gloves. We're gonna need to try and twist this to break it loose like so. And then we can pull it off the engine slowly but surely. I'm gonna grab some towels just in case. Okay, 
There's the engine side. We'll move over to the radiator side. Here's the clamp for the radiator side. I'm actually gonna take these two 10 millimeter bolts off that are holding the bracket in place. That should give us a little bit more room. After just wriggling the hose assembly back and forth, I think I may have broke it free enough to pull this off but it is no joke trying to get this hose off oh look at that there's two 10 millimeter bolts holding the coolant overflow in place once you have these removed we can pull the tank out That gives us access to the three clamshell clamps that hold the harness that goes to the fans. You'll need a 90 degree pick tool to release the clip while also prying this portion open to release the clamp. With those clamps released, we can disconnect the harness from the fans. Remove the three 12 millimeter bolts that hold the hood latch in place. There's a retaining clip on the bottom of the hood latch that we'll need to release. Just reach behind the radiator support to push the tabs in and you should be able to push it out. Along the top of the radiator support, there's going to be three more clips that hold the cables for the hood latch in place. So again, just press the tabs in and press it down to release those. Before we can take the radiator support off, I'm going to remove the intake snorkel and the air dam. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts and six pop clips. There's two 12 millimeter bolts holding the radiator support on each side. I also forgot to remove this retaining clip, so uh, don't forget that. Back underneath the car, there's two more 12 millimeter bolts that we need to remove before we can pull the radiator support out. We have all of the bolts out. I'll move the hood latch over to the driver's side here to get it out of the way. And then we should be able to just lift this up and out. We need to remove the fans, but before we can do so, there's this piece of foam that's on top of the fans and the radiator. So you want to carefully pull it off of the radiator. It's just taped on the bottom side. You can use a small flathead screwdriver, or what I did was took a plastic razor blade and cut it in half and it fits in perfectly into this groove of the radiator and you, you can just go along the bottom and it comes off nicely. On each side of the fans, you'll see these tabs here. You need to press these together with either your fingers or a pair of pliers while also pushing the fans towards the back of the car to release it. At this point, we'll wanna pull the fans up and it should be easier to try and get this passenger side up and out, followed by the driver's side. We've got access to the lower radiator hose clamp now, so I'm gonna move this out of the way and take the hose off. Keep in mind that even though we drained the radiator, there may be some coolant left in the hose, so I've got a drip tray underneath just in case. I'm gonna just point this down here just in case. Yep, there is some coolant. There's a plastic panel with foam on each side that's covering the bolts that hold the condenser to the radiator. So what we need to do is on the top, push it to the outside of the car to get it off this clip, like that. And for the bottom clip, we need to push the panel up 
and kind of wiggle it off of that clip and we can slide this out. We can't do the same thing to the bottom portion of the panel on the driver's side because the lines get in the way. So I'm just gonna pull this one out instead. And we're just gonna leave this here until we remove the radiator stays up top and then we can pull the panel out. We're left with these radiator stays that are held in place with two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one on each side, so remove these. There's four of these 10 millimeter bolts holding the condenser to the radiator that we need to remove, two on each side. Should be able to pull the radiator up and out now. Just keep in mind that there is probably still some coolant left inside of it. Before we toss in the new radiator, we need to install one of the oil lines. So grab the one with the 45 degree AN fitting. Use the supplied uh, assembly lube on the threads before you install this. And we want to install it with the bent fitting facing towards the core. So we got that on there. I'm gonna use an AN fitting wrench to tighten this down. We're gonna carefully lower the radiator into place. We need to pay attention to this upper oil cooler and fitting and drop in the driver's side first. We need to get it behind that AC line here. find the holes here. There we go. That was satisfying. Here's a close up of that upper oil cooler AN fitting. This is how it needs to be installed. It is a very tight fit, but once everything's in here, it fits up perfectly. If you do find that you're getting some rubbing, you can just bend this line to create clearance. And now it's just a matter of getting the AC condenser bolted onto the radiator. The radiator stays reinstalled and I'll show you how to route the oil lines. Go ahead and take your oil filter off. If you're reusing it, just set it aside. If you're changing the fluids, you can toss it. Wipe up any of the residual oil and debris that might be in this tray. Once that's clean, we can slide the spacer on there and make sure you put some oil on the O-ring. To assemble the oil cooler adapter, the plugs are gonna go on top and then the male AN fittings are gonna go on the bottom. Make sure you use that assembly lube on the O-rings. We'll just hand tighten these for now. We can install the adapter on top of the spacer. Again, make sure you lube the O-ring. And then we'll thread in this extension screw. And you wanna get this lined up so that the lines are as close to the oil cap as possible without obviously interfering with it. And we'll take a 27 millimeter socket and screw this down until you feel it touch the adapter. And then once you have this lined up where it needs to be, we're gonna tighten this down another three quarters of a turn. With the adapter installed, we can tighten down the AN fittings with a 27 millimeter socket and the plugs with a 29 millimeter. We're gonna take the leftover oil line with the two 90 degree bends and install it onto the radiator. 
Again, make sure you lube the threads before you install this. I'm gonna leave that loose for now. And the other end, I'm gonna make a U shape here, is gonna go to the AN fitting that's closest to the oil cap. Keep in mind that you may need to rotate the bends here so that everything fits up nicely. Once you have it lined up in this U-shape here, we're gonna tighten down the fittings to lock it in place. We're gonna take the lower oil line and do the same thing. With those lines installed, double check to make sure that the adapter plate is clocked where we need it. Again, we want it as close to the oil cap as possible without interfering with it. And once you have it where you need, we can tighten down the extension screw with a 27 millimeter. Once that is tight, we can reinstall the oil filter or install the new one and move on to the next step. Grab that lower radiator hose that we disconnected earlier and you may need to use some penetrating oil to aid in the installation of this onto the new radiator but let's see if we can slide this on here i think i've got that as far on as i'm going to get it it's on there about an inch and a half so i'm going to call that good we need to move the clamp over now They did specify to clock the tabs of this clamp towards the top so that we can get the fans back in. The fans can go back in now. I wanna get that driver's side lower tab underneath the hoses and then we can drop the passenger side in. And then we'll line up the mounting points on the bottom with the new radiator. Should slide right in and make sure before you do this take out the uh, hardware that's on the new radiator so we can install this grab the harness for the fans get it reinstalled in those clamshell mounts and then we can plug everything back in Drop in the overflow tank. Make sure it seats into the mount on the bottom. And then tighten down the two 10 millimeter bolts. Let's see if we can get the upper radiator hose back on. All right, that's going on. That went on a lot easier than the bottom one. Do the engine side. That's nice. Let's get the clamps in place. Don't forget to reinstall the mount for the filler neck. We'll replace the stock radiator cap with our new Jackson Racing one. Time for the upper radiator support to go back in. We'll get the hood latch reinstalled. Make sure you get the clips for the lines popped in their place. This is the point where you hope uh, you didn't forget anything. Don't forget the two bolts on the bottom side. Before I reinstall the intake, I am gonna trim a small portion on that lower mount. So you can see I've drawn that edge there with a Sharpie. I need to trim that off so we aren't making any contact with the AN fittings. With the intake trimmed, I can drop it in here and reinstall the hose onto the throttle body. I'm gonna double check the clearance with that fitting down here. Perfect. We'll get the bolts reinstalled, get the snorkel back on with the air dam, and we'll move on from there.
At this point, you can fill up the radiator with coolant, start the car, let it run for a few minutes, check to see if there are any leaks, turn the car off, uh, check the oil level. You'll need to add about half a quart of oil to compensate for the new oil cooler. If there aren't any leaks and your oil level is good, then you are set to reinstall the underbody panels and the front bumper. And that's it. I would recommend that you check the coolant levels after you've driven the car for a little bit. Uh, again, make sure that the car is completely cooled down. Uh, when doing this, you wanna just make sure that there aren't any air bubbles in the cooling system. Fill it up as necessary. But this is another quality product from Jackson Racing. As expected, they also have a standalone oil cooler if you wanna go that route. I'll link both of the products down below. But that is gonna do it for today, guys. I am completely exhausted. This would normally take a couple hours without filming. It took me a lot longer because I was trying to be as detailed as possible. But if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I'm releasing this tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.